Frada, QB Labs, Data Center Operations Manager, Director, <laughs> Director, <laughs> Data Center Operations Director. I just spoke to Nemo about sort of more the macro stuff that's going on, but I really want to understand what mining looks like on the operational level as well. I know you guys have been growing. We work together to bring customers to Ethiopia as well. Um, maybe give people a bit of background quickly, two minutes on your experience in mining. I know you've done some mining in, in Sweden for some bigger companies and you have a lot of expertise there. So people give people a bit of background um, and then we can talk about yeah, what repairs and stuff look like on your, on your site. All right, thank you, Jesse. Uh, yeah, happy to be here. Yeah, well, my educational background starts with computer science. I studied my bachelor's degree was computer science from Ethiopia at the Sababa University. And um, I was involved in Bitcoin mining in 2018 in Sweden. Back in Sweden, there was this company called Bluba uh, Data Centers. So we've started off with a very early stage of like uh, Bitmain, Amp Miners, S9 and all that. So we started, I started off as like a data center technician in that facility. We started from zero. It was a brownfield. So I pretty much had an experience back then, like uh, starting from the ground up, like building up the sites, you know, making the custom shelves and all that, like crimping actually cables, custom network cables and all that. So uh, that, that facility was like four megawatts and then uh, moved to northern Sweden uh, to work with this uh, company uh, called um, Ethics Everywhere. It was owned by a company in, in Luxembourg. So further north in the Arctic Circle, it was pretty much cold and then uh, ideal for data centers as well. So they have like uh, around 12, 13 hydro dams around that area. So it was ideal for Bitcoin miners. So uh, just went in there and then uh, they were at that time mining Ethereum with the GPU miners uh, and a chassis. And then after uh, working for two more years there, They've uh, sold out to a company, a German company called uh, Go to Cloud, uh, and then the Go to Cloud uh, continued to mine Ethereum uh, for a while, and then um, uh, another company after uh, yeah two three more years uh, jump in uh, a very big player in Bitcoin mining uh, called GDA, uh, and then digital assets exactly Genesis digital assets. So they they they, they acquired. The, 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 the facility. It was an 8 megawatt facility and they completely shifted to Bitcoin mining only. So that's also when I was introduced to uh, ASIC miners. Uh, like, uh, I mean, like Bluebo was ASIC miners as well. I went back to GPUs and I went back again to ASIC miners. And uh, the facility was 8 megawatt and then uh, I, I uh, founded my, my own company called PTG Nordics. That, that was like uh, working on uh, building, designing, and operating data centers, especially uh, Bitcoin mining data centers. And then um, I was uh, introduced, well, we found each other with, with Namo in 2023, and I always had a dream bringing uh, Bitcoin mining to Africa. And then like when I saw like Namo was already uh, doing with his uh, partner, uh, doing that uh, in Ethiopia, I would say, I just want to be part of this. And then... Uh, I want to yeah contribute my experience and my, my my skills over the years, and then um, it took us a week of conversation for me to fly back to Addis so that we can have uh, the uh, the on-site visit and all that. I, I think were you there? Like, yeah, I think yeah. exactly. So that was when we met as well for the first exactly time. yeah. So uh, QRB Labs were uh, building like working on the construction side of the building their their facility. So I just love to be boots on the ground. I, I love the technical operation side of uh, Bitcoin mining. And then since then, we've been uh, uh, working on, like with QRB, working on the designs, the implementation of the electrical part. And then after we uh, we got like uh, the customers as well, uh, that we bring in like the miners with all the, the process that have been taking long and start operating uh, i think november 2023 i think so and uh, yeah and yeah we started small and yeah we're growing uh, in the near future as well uh yeah and uh, of course when i was also coming to ethiopia i was thinking okay we've heard like from zero to like 600 megawatt was like 
like very quick, right? So uh, I had this discussion with you, with you as well. So the I, the other plan that I had was like to to establish a repair center in in Ethiopia, not only for Ethiopian market, but like for Africa as well. Because logistics, RMA, and all that from Africa to vendors in Asia and vice versa is super super hard. So we thought like, okay, maybe setting up a repair center would be easier. But then it hasn't happened yet because uh, bigger, bigger vendors like Big Main and Big Deer that established and uh, opened up their own repair center. Mm -hmm. And not much of the mining companies in Ethiopia come together and join forces and uh, like discuss, okay, what do we need and what do we need to establish? So we pretty much do the repairs and uh, the maintenance and all that on our facility for ourselves so we are, we don't do that for other miners does micro bt have a, a repair center as well no last year we have that discussion with them but they say like we don't have enough fleet that went to ethiopia in order for us to open up like a, really? yeah they say that because like uh there's certain threshold for them to be able to start up like a, a repair center in ethiopia so i don't think we've we've reached that level in ethiopia when it comes to uh okay. what's miners yeah I know we all love what's miners. Yeah, everybody. Africa, yeah, right? yeah, true. So the, the question is, what do we do if they if they break, right? Yeah. Tell, talk to me a bit about um, first operational differences in climates and surroundings between the Nordics, where you have a lot of experience, and Ethiopia. What are the key differences? Yeah, and then let's get into what sort of the typical repair work is and what what it what it is that you actually have to do on site to keep miners running. Oh, cool, interesting. So. Yeah, uh, I mean, in, as you might have imagined, in, in the Nordics, the, the weather is extremely cold. So you might need to push enough volumes of air to the facility just to keep the fans and all the, your miners like operate like uh, healthy. But you don't necessarily need to have external uh, cooling per se. Yeah. Uh, but when it comes to Africa, especially in Addis, where we're operating, there's like a, uh, there has never been a snow. The, the weather never reached less than zero or whatever. So you need to have definitely for air-cooled miners, you definitely need to have some sort of external cooling environment other than the room temperature or the outside temperature per se. So for us, what we come up with as a solution is like we, we use modular containerized data centers. So we, we have uh, water curtains. So we set up um, pipes to all those containers and then we use water pumps and then... Uh, we have like a couple of uh, metrics of like temperatures of hash pores and ambient temperatures and then whenever it reaches to a certain level where it starts to um, uh, affect our miners then our pump triggers and then uh, start spraying the water in the water curtain and then start to cool off so we got like the, the the trend of temperature rises over the day and then that's how the the cooling operates in Ethiopia mm. because the average temperature I think in the dry season could reach up to twenty seven degrees Celsius. Okay. Yeah. What, why I'm why I'm asking that for them is because I mean I've I've seen a site in yeah. the Dubai desert fifty five degrees yeah. where they actually use two water curtains, yeah. right? And it's all day. Yeah. And a lot of people have this perception of Ethiopia, Africa. It's very hot, yeah. right? But the climate is actually very friendly to yeah. Bitcoin mining. Bitx solomining de got it premium. Made in Germany. You want to go fancy? Go for NerdX or NerdQX++ for a lot of power. Worldwide shipping. Check out solomining.de today. Yeah, it's true. And uh, not only you need to, I mean, like, uh, in theory, a uh, moving air gets pretty colder than uh, steady air, right? So uh, when we spray the the air, we also have exhaust uh, fans to the, to, to the hot house. Uh, to the hot aisle side of the container as well so a negative pressure actually makes like the um, room temperature air to get colder without having to spray any water per se, um, in, in theory yeah but like we we do spray a couple of times per day depending on the temperature rises uh, in a dry season or like even in the cold seasons uh yeah but then in sweden the only thing that you need to worry about is like uh, supplying enough volumes of air for the miners' fan to spin. Like, I mean, if you have like a, a completely just opened uh, air like in both sides, then you'll be having uh, crash fans like in both sides because like uh, you definitely need to channel the volumes of the airs per like. There needs to be some um, steady level of pressure. Exactly, exactly. You need to balance the pressure and you need to control that one, like in, 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 in channeling both the exhaust and the, the intake. The, okay. Yeah. 
And then last but not least, um, Fred, um, I want to just highlight a bit. What are the technical faults that you are seeing that are normal? Um, and what do you do to fix them? Do you have spare parts? Do customers bring spare parts? What does that look like today? So, yeah, the, 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 the very interesting things uh, being a data center operator in Ethiopia is like the problem of us having hard time importing parts, like you can call it fans and power supplies and all that, uh, help us come up with improvised solution for that problem, which means like we usually maintain as much as we can in, in Ethiopia. I mean, I don't, I don't know if you remember what Nemo mentioned earlier today, is that like for us to even get the hash boards that is still under warranty, which is zero cost, we need to pay like tax. And then we need to, we need to mention the value of the hash board, even though it's like being given to us like for free, right? So we try to repair power supplies, for instance. We try to supply like capacitors or resistors, whatever is burned in those power supplies and try to maintain the power supply instead of trying to replace because it's super hard to have like uh, uh, replacement parts. You can't even find C13, uh, C30, C20 uh, power cables. So what we do is like we try to improvise as much as we can for the things that can be fixed mm. in-house in the country. And for the things, for example, like um, if you have a broken fan or whatever it is, you, you can't really make that up, right? So we need to wait for like uh, spare parts to come around. And then while we're at it, we don't want to have like a lower hash rate of like downtimes or whatever it is. So we try to shuffle around the hash boards from X to Y within the same customer, of course, so that we can increase whichever miner is missing a hash board could have like a hash board from a miner that is losing a fan. The, yeah, a fan or whatever it is. So we try to... Franklin. Improvise, yeah, Frankenstein and do some MacGyver stuff. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's what we do. Yeah. I mean, the, the harder it gets to get the parts, the more innovation you have to do. Exactly. It's helping us to be innovative, yeah, with what we have at hand. Fredam, do you have any other comments? Well, we, everybody loves your, your podcast and then uh, keep doing what you're doing. You, you've been inspirational to everybody and especially your, your covers to Ethiopian Bitcoin mining is super amazing. And keep... Uh, Keep doing what you're doing. Thank you, Jesse. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right. It's been a free Adam. All right. If you have questions about QRB Labs hosting, feel free to reach out. All the best. All right, Bill. Thank you. A couple of hours. All right. Thank you so much, Jesse. Hash rate up. Hardware sales, advisory, hosting, and site brokerage. Find new and used ASIC deals through the website and the Telegram channel below. Make smarter decisions with Hash rate up.